Our final presenter today will be Catherine Barron. Ms. Barron, again, is an Assistant Attorney General and the Public Administration Division Chief. You've already heard from her briefly today, and she will be presenting on elder abuse awareness and scam prevention. The floor is yours, Ms. Barron. Thanks, Kristen, and it's uh, great to be back with uh, everybody. Protecting consumers and older adults is extremely important to the AG, as you know, and that's why she set up the task force. Now, we've already talked uh, several times today uh, about this uh, brochure, the No Excuse for Elder Abuse brochure. It's one of the first things the uh, task force did to reach all uh, Michiganians. We made sure it was available in several different languages on the inside of the brochure. It goes through the physical signs of abuse. I'm not going to go through those. Um, uh, earlier presenter today went through those. It goes through the emotional behavioral signs. Again, these have been covered, but we really suggest you get the brochure and have it in your hands and available. The financial signs, Scott did a great job of uh, covering these and um, I'm not going to repeat them here, and you know from other presentations, including the one from Adult Protective Services, that it's important uh, to call Adult Protective Services. You know, if you remember only one thing from the presentations uh, heretofore, and there are lots of things to remember, and I think it would be trust your gut when you think something is wrong, report it. Right. We had somebody from the UK saying, hey, we've got to foster this culture of caring and protecting uh, older individuals. And we do that by trusting our gut and reporting. You can get copies of the um, brochures by emailing ag-pa at michigan.gov several times today. You've asked us for this email address. Here it is uh, once again. You know, today I'm also talking about scams. And you might ask yourself why? Because according to the FBI in 2021, the national loss for victims over the age of 60, are you ready for this? 1.7 billion. Wow. The average loss, the dollar loss per victim, you see it right there, 18,246. That's a big number. Now, national numbers can be hard to relate to, so let's look at a Michigan number. In 2021, Michigan adults over 60 years old lost nearly $32 million to scams. Michigan alone, $32 million. Our roadmap for today, we're going to concentrate on how you remain powerful, take control when criminals contact you. Now, I know I'm talking to a lot of professionals out there, so the idea is you're the teacher tomorrow. Take these things that we learn together, or for many of you, it's simply reinforcing them and help us get the word out. Right, so we're going to concentrate on how we remain powerful and can take control when criminals contact us. We're going to discuss common uh, tricks criminals use to manipulate us. We're going to give you some fraud fighting tools. I think that's important, including using two factor authentication and freezing your credit report. And now today it's hard for us to have a conversation because we're doing this virtually. I'd rather have a conversation than a lecture, um, but when you're out there teaching and helping people, make sure it is a conversation because that's how they'll best learn uh, and uh, implement those. I like this screen. This is us, right? Together and powerful. We're gonna become better at recognizing scams and we're gonna have in place a plan for how we react when we're contacted. And if one of these criminals gets through our defense, we're going to know that who we can report to and get help from. And that way we can move from victim to survivor. All right, first and foremost, powerful people educate themselves. You can continue uh, today's education, our conversation, by listening to AARP's free The Perfect Scam podcast. If you don't know how to access podcasts, get a friend or young person to help. These podcasts are fantastic. The episodes go back to 2018, 
and are each about only 15 or 30 minutes long. They're multiple episodes on every scam we're going to cover today. And they also feature scams we don't have time to cover, like mortgage closing, jury duty, investment, accidents, bogus charities, psychics, housekeepers, or caregiver scams. You get the idea. You know, it's one thing to hear me or for people you work with to hear you say, don't believe anybody who contacts you is telling the truth. It's quite another thing to hear it from fraud survivors. I, I, I can't tout this uh, this resource enough. This is really something, if you're not familiar with them, go on there, listen to a few. I bet you'll find yourself referring family and friends to this resource. So the Perfect Scam podcast and our discussion today will help us remember that criminals manipulate victims into becoming emotional and vulnerable. Right. And we'll also remember that caller ID, email addresses, links, profile attachments, etc., they can easily be faked. And also, of course, if something does happen, you can reach out to Attorney General Nessel's team. We're here to help that this number is is on the brochure that I keep telling you, you ought to get a copy of no excuse for elder abuse. This number along with many other uh, contacts. So we want to spot and stop this manipulation. Now, when we hear about a scam secondhand, the red flags often seem obvious to us and we think, oh, this would never happen to me. Well, wasn't what isn't obvious in the retelling of the story is the intense emotional state that criminals create, right? Criminals create victims using emotional and, and psychological manipulation. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the psychology of a scam. Victims are created using emotional and psychological manipulation. Criminals manipulate us by being experts at this. That's why it's so important to completely avoid talking to them. Look, when I, I talk to um, residents out there, I let them know the truth. And the truth is, I think if I let these criminals talk to me, I'd become a victim. And I've been working in the consumer protection area more than 25 years. Criminals are masters in the art of persuasion, distraction, deception, and if necessary, they're going to use aggression. Let's talk about persuasion a little bit. One powerful form of persuasion is reciprocity, right? If you might think of an area in reciprocity, this may or may not come to you naturally, but any of these free lunch, free whatever, that's an example of reciprocity. Another example that comes up is often the advanced fee fraud, right? Oh, congratulations, you've won a million dollars. I just need a few hundred and I'll give you a million. I just need a few hundred for whatever reason. So reciprocity is something that is used uh, frequently. Now, another thing that is used frequently is source credibility. And if we were together in a room, I'd ask you what's an example of source credibility. And it's important not to give people the answer. Let them think about this because we want them to be thinking of the scams that are out there and telling us. This is a big one, imposter scams, right? Any sort of an imposter scam is, uh, is going on the source credibility. You know, as an aside, one of the hottest imposter scams lately is the Amazon package delivery, right? Why? Well, um, because so many of us are ordering from Amazon and it, it's usually a bogus text or email about an Amazon delivery. It's again effective because so many of us are ordering from Amazon. Now, the other two persuasion tactics are motivation and social consensus. They're closely related. This is when the criminals convince you everybody's doing it, whatever it is they want you to do, and they need you to get on board. Maybe a recent example of this is, you've heard of this, I've heard of this, everybody's trying to get us to invest in, invest in um, cryptocurrency, right? Now, criminals often combine uh, persuasion with some sort of distraction, right? This is when they cause the emotional uh, distress 
and disrupt our clear, <clears throat> excuse me, thought and behavior. So they intentionally do this, right? They do this by maybe contacting you out of the blue, catching you off guard. The distraction may be positive news like, hey, you won the lottery or negative news, something a little more ominous, like there's some sort of emergency, there's urgency, you don't have time to think, you've got to act. Um, they also create a feeling of high pressure, right? High pressure, high stakes. They may be pushy, rude. They're going to evoke fear or another emotion that in interferes with your ability to think clearly, right? And of course, deception. Now, it's no news to anybody that criminals lie, right? They're masters at the art of deception. They make something that is fake appear to us like fact. They'll claim you've been specifically selected, right, out of a large pool of people. You're gonna get a great deal or service. They may tell you that you're due some financial windfall, like you've won a lottery or being offered a free government grant. Free money, right? The criminal may already have a good deal of your information, making the contact look legitimate, and they're simply asking you for some personal information to confirm your identity. That often gets us because they, they're, they'll rattle off all this stuff about us and oh, I just need this and, and, and we're not thinking clearly and we give them that information, right? Aggression is another form, right? Threats, they provoke fear. They're going to harm a loved one. You're gonna be arrested. You're gonna be thrown in jail. Um, they're going to shut off your utility. And it, again, they, they they do this because they know, one, we love our loved ones, right? And we'll do anything for them. Nobody wants to be arrested, thrown in prison. Oh, I may have forgotten to pay my utility, right? So the goal is to get either your personal identifiable information or your money. And if they're getting number one, they're after number two. So if they're getting your personally identifiable information, they're really a, uh, after your money. Now, when it comes to asking for money, and I'm going to slow down here. If we listen to how we're being asked to pay or really told to pay, and it's any one of these scam payment methods, you can stop the scam. So if we can teach people what the scam payment methods are and say, hey, when one of these methods comes up, stop, 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 then, then we will have accomplished a lot. So what do you think are some of the scam payment methods? Now, the number one form of a scam payment method is cash, right? They want you to put cash in a book or hide it or something like that. So that is a scam payment method. Another one, what's another one? I'm guessing many of you are saying, ooh, wire transfers, right? Western Union, MoneyGram. Why are they doing that? Because it's mostly untraceable. You can pick them up anywhere in the world. There are limited protections. What's another one? And this is a bigger one than people realize, right? Gift cards, retail cards, maybe even a preloaded debit card. Funds are loaded onto these cards and can be quickly depleted. What the criminal does is they coach you, you know, go to these stores, here's the limit, you're gonna have to go to A, B, and C store, um, lie and say it's for this, just like the criminals coach the victims on what to say when you go to the um, bank or your credit union, they coach you and say, don't say it's for your grandchild. Don't say it's for a love interest. Instead, say you're buying a car or you're um, doing some home impair, uh, home repair um, things or home improvement. Um, now, we're working with the financial institutions to coach them on watching and stopping this, right? And now with the Financial Exploitation Prevention Act, that's even more effective. But these criminals will uh, coach you on this. So they coach you to go get these gift cards, go to these different stores. Don't ask anybody. They may even try to keep you on the phone. Why do they want to keep you on the phone? Because they know as soon as you hang up, you might ask somebody else. And as soon as you get a second opinion, they've lost a victim, right? Here's another one, a um, cash our check and send us money. So we're going to send you this check. It's a good check. Wait two weeks before, you know, so it clears and then send us money. 
So what the victims do here is they cast the check. It looks like it's in their account. So they figure out, oh, this is a good check. I'm going to send money. Um, they've cashed a counterfeit check and their bank or credit union will be telling them shortly. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it takes a while. And I've even heard of, in fact, I had an attorney tell me this in the last several weeks. They took a check, and this was a six-figure check, to their local bank, and they said, oh, I'm a little leery about this. I want to make sure it's good. The local bank uh, took some time, and they said, yep, nope, it's good. And guess what? It wasn't. The attorney was out the money, but the attorney, being who they were, and the bank, knowing it was an attorney, they made good on that. Uh, your banks and credit unions may not be so kind um, with consumers who are not attorneys, when you cash a check, you're vouching as to its authenticity. And why is that fair? Well, you know a whole lot more about where this check came and whether or not it's authentic than the bank does. And, and often it takes them some time to figure out it's a, uh, a bogus uh, counterfeit check. So here's another one, cryptocurrency or any sort of virtual digital money. You're going to be victims who could be directed to a Bitcoin ATM and told to purchase Bitcoins using cash. Once the Bitcoin payment is transferred to the criminal, the money is gone and can't be traced. Okay, so the advice in this regard is simple. If the request is for payment in any of these forms, stop. It's a scam. Now, I'm not talking about somebody comes and cuts your lawn, the kid down the street, they want to be paid in cash. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody reaches out to you. You don't know them. You're not quite sure how to find them later. That's what I'm talking about. Now, in this context, we're often asked about pay apps. And, and what are pay apps? So these are not regulated. These, it's, it's short for payment application. And examples are on the slide. These forms of payments are not regulated and you should use them only with people and businesses you know and trust. Criminals are using our unfamiliarity, I'll speak to it, my unfamiliarity with payment apps to scam us. The FBI's Internet, Internet Crime Complaint Center, when you hear somebody refer to IC3, that stands for Internet Crime Complaint Center, and that's the FBI, they recently issued an alert about an imposter scam and criminals use this payment app to steal money. And I, I just want to quickly go through you through with you how it works, right? So you get this text from your bank or credit union. And uh, it says, wait a second, did you attempt to an instant payment in the amount of $5,000? And you're like, oh, holy cow, no. So before today, and we caution you against responding this way, but let's say it's before today. So what do you do? You quickly reply no. And their reply is, hey, you're going to get a call from our fraud specialist. They're going to contact you soon. And what do you know? What happens? The phone rings, right? And your caller ID says your bank's legitimate 1-800 support number. Right? So you're thinking, wow, this is serious. I'm so glad I was paying attention and I responded, right? The person that calls you establishes further cre credibility by confirming your past address, your social security number, and the last four digits of your bank account. You're like, oh, wow, this, this, this is the real deal. I mean, they've got all this, you know, this, this is something I got to address, right? Then the person walks you through various steps needed to reverse the fake instant payment transaction. These steps really result in an untraceable transfer of money to the criminal, right? So after today, you're going to know how to avoid this, right? What are you going to do? Well, you're not going to respond. But let's say you're like, oh, but I get alerts on my phone from my bank. Okay, don't respond through this method. Call your bank up at a number you know to be accurate or credit union. I don't mean to be biased and find out if it's legitimate. Don't respond through this because this is this is bogus and this is a way that you're gonna lose money. So, but they're getting pretty good, wouldn't you say? This is pretty sophisticated. So what we just covered is a form of an imposter scam. I want you to think about with me next. Yeah. I want you to think about with me 
some other forms of imposter scams. What are some other people or organizations that criminals were pretend to be? And this is where it's important when you're giving presentations like this, don't give them the answer, make them tell you. And hopefully what you'll hear is basically, they say lots of things like lottery officials, government employees, utility, debt, tech support, grandchild, friend, romantic admirer, just about anybody who contacts you can be an imposter, right? So it's important that we all learn to appreciate that anybody who contacts us is a potential imposter. Now we're gonna role play a few of these situations so that you're ready and can put uh, a plan in place for when you're contacted and you are gonna get contacted. So I would pick somebody out, maybe in the front row, maybe in the back row and say, congratulations, I'm so happy for you, you've won. Or it could be again, the government grant, limited time. What are you gonna do? And that's when you, you be comfortable with silence and, and listen and guide your learners. What are they gonna say? What are they, how are they gonna respond? Hopefully, they're gonna say, don't, you're gonna not answer or respond, right? If it's a call or an email, a text, remember the one we just got, right? Because once you answer the phone or respond to the email or text, it's like placing a big target on your back. Why? Well, the criminals know who answers or responds and they turn around and they sell that information. It's valuable information. It's repeatedly sold. Right, it's valuable information. Now you're on what the criminals call a sucker list and you're gonna get flooded with scams. All right, so don't answer, respond. Maybe it's a, a, a weak moment, you answer, you start to respond because you were expecting a call or what, what, what have you, what do you do next, right? And this is when we've gotta get people comfortable with what they may see as being rude. You gotta hang up. You got to delete the communication. Don't listen out of curiosity, member. If you let those criminals talk to you because they're masters at the art of their trade. Again, I'm convinced if I let them talk to me, I'd be I'd fall victim because they're so good at what they do. All right. Lottery or sweepstakes scams. Um, let's say you're kind of playing along and then you realize you don't want to be rude. So maybe you just respond to them. Look. I'll give you your money a month after I get mine, right? If you really want a lottery, your credit's really good. All of a sudden, if it wasn't already, I'll give you your money a month after mine. I get mine. So that's a another thing that can be part of your plan. Again, why is it so important not to answer or respond? And I have a separate slide on this next because it's important for people to understand that even picking up the phone, and certainly if you fall for the con, you're on the sucker list, right? If you fall for the con, it's the sucker list times 100. All right, so you're going to be targeted. All right, let's go to some of the other uh, imposter scams. Another call, this time the caller ID or your email um, from line identifies the communication as coming from the IRS, right? Or Social Security. Medicare, uh, your local police, maybe your utility, your credit card, any number of things. Maybe a respected tech company like Microsoft. What's going to be your plan? Again, hopefully you can guide your learners into don't answer or respond, right? Hang up or delete, right? Maybe if I need you, I'll contact you. Right, let's change it up a little bit. Let's say you sign on to your computer and you get a pop up that there's a problem. It tells you click here or call this number to resolve. Your computer, boy, you know, it has been running slow. That's true in my computer, right? It's been running slow, it's been sluggish. I probably do have a problem. What's gonna be your plan, right? Again, you gotta don't answer, don't respond, close that window, hang up. If you need to go to somebody, go to somebody you trust, maybe the local store, the geek squad, whatever it is, but don't respond in this manner. Because if you do, and you let them have access to your computer, 
you you've breached things they may put malware on your computer they're all of a sudden logging your keystrokes your passwords it can be really bad news all right let's say now it's your credit card company right you've had bogus charges in the past they say is a there's a block on your credit card because of some suspected charges oh no i just said to my husband to the store he didn't want to go for me he's getting some things i know he's going to charge it he's going to be so mad at me if there's a block on my credit card right and so you want to get it taken care of first no right they may say it's over ten thousand dollars and to reverse the charges and unblock your credit card we just need some information from you what's your plan do not i repeat do not give them any information don't answer or respond hang up if i need you i'll contact you what if though you have you're playing visions of in your head of your uh, your husband not being able to charge those things you made him go to the store to get. Flip over your credit card or go to a bill, get the customer service number, you call them, right? Then you know who you're talking with and to. That's the only way, right? Okay, um, I could go through some other examples and you can, you know, get a sense with the people you're talking with. Even ask them, you know, have you gotten recent contact? What did you do? And you can role play it, okay? Um, again, it's important to go to the source of the number that you know to be accurate, all right? You can also contact Attorney General Nestle's Consumer Protection Team. Again, that contact information is on the no excuse for elder abuse for sure. Now, if you haven't already gotten a call in this next category, you or somebody you know or love is going to. Next, please. Grandparents love their grandchildren, right? Uh, even more than our kids, I, I'm finding out. At any rate, we're going to do just about anything for them. It might be exceedingly hard for a grandparent to hang up if they think a grandchild is in trouble. The criminals know this and they'll try to keep you on the phone. Why did they try to keep you on the phone again? They know if you hang up that you might talk with somebody else and if you do, they've lost a, a victim. And again, they're gonna coach you on how to get the cash from your financial institution or go to different stores. This coaching is to avoid financial institution or stores anti-fraud measures, okay? Now, to make the impersonation more convincing, the criminal is gonna share accurate family details, scraped together from the grandchild's social media activity. I know this happened to my mom. She got a call about my son. They told her where my son worked and a lot of information. They had her, right? Um, they've got enough details um, and the emergency, they'll say it seems kind of plausible to you. Um, they may turn the phone over to another scammer who pretends to be a doctor, police officer, lawyer, etc., who backs up the story. Um, the grandchild, sometimes they're pretending to be the grandchild, implores you to send money immediately adding anxiously right don't tell mom and dad or don't tell mom or don't do do something right what's going to be your plan what's your plan now i'm going to share what some people have told me uh is effective but you do need to have a plan in place so some people have said they use a code word um some folks have said they've asked a middle name um but be careful these these scammers are really good. They may be, they're probably able to give you a middle name. So a code word is something they're likely not going to be able to. I would suggest that, and you suggest to others to um, program the grandkids phone numbers into your phone and let folks know, hey, you know, you can text while you're on the phone. So you could say, hey, yeah, I'm, you know, wait, I'm so confused. I need to uh, I need to I need to go to the bathroom, whatever you need to say to buy yourself time. Um, I, I'm at a medical appointment. I have an e an urgent medical need just kind of off the record. I used an urgent medical need the other day just because I wanted to toy with somebody um, and, and it worked. Um, at any rate, um, hang up and get some time or if you're still on the phone, text your grandchild uh, um, they're probably going to respond to you very quickly or calling um, and again just buy yourself some time hang up and confirm 
right? Now a variation on the grandparent scam is this fake kidnapping, all right? Next. This, what the, what the FBI is reporting here is some instances of voice cloning in conjunction with a kidnap scam. And the criminal's not gonna let you off the phone, uh, claiming if you do anything, they're gonna kill your loved one. If you can't bring yourself to hang up the phone, again, know that you can send and receive texts while on the phone, and thus you can text a family member. Or you could have someone else in your family uh, call them. Any, either way, you need to call a number you know is accurate and verify. I'm just gonna pause a second here and I know I'm running out of time and I've got lots of slides to still cover. I just wanna mention here, there was a really good episode on the perfect scam. It was about a person in his 20s. He didn't fall victim to this, but boy, what it illustrates is how none of us should be ashamed of this. These people are so good at what they do. When he finally got the courage to hang up, he really wondered if he had just signed mom's death warrant, okay? He was a 20 year old, very much with it, had a high pressure job, very high functioning, high, uh, high wage earner. So he's got everything going and he was kind of caught up on it. It was, and, and then when he hung up, he immediately called police, police went there. He knew his mom was safe when he got a call. Later, he realized, wait a second, mom has two dogs, right? Why didn't I hear the dogs? Um, but that's perfectly normal. They put you in a position to panic and not think clearly. All right, romance scams. So um, this is a very um, prominent thing. It's the highest financial loss of all internet facility related crimes. The FTC reports that in 2021, over four, 547 million was sent to romance scammers. And they also estimate only about 15% of these crimes are being reported. Additionally, Michigan's Adult Protective Service Agency reports that this is exploding, that there are a lot of these and their customers are falling victim. All right. Criminals may spend a long time getting to know the victim. They may build a sense of trust like they, they may profess their love very quickly. It may take a little time. They create fake online profiles, otherwise mask their identity. They uh, will get, sometimes say they're from the U.S. next, um, but they're currently overseas for business or military service. They may say they need the victim to send money for an emergency a hospital bill, travel to meet the victim. The criminal may sp spend money on you first, right? To really get you on the line. Um, they may say that they plan to visit you, but they can't because of some emergency. Okay, so again, we gotta have a plan, right? One of those things can be the a reverse internet image search. And we've got a handout for you and uh, Scott Alfelt's gonna put in the, um, question and answer, a link to that handout. Uh, the handout will give you a link so you can get instructions on how to do an internet reverse image search. Um, often it will let you know that the person that you've fallen in love with, maybe they really don't exist or it's somebody else. All right. The biggest enemy of a romance scam is somebody else who cares about the potential victim. All right, they're gonna try to manipulate so you don't do this, but you need to consult someone you trust. They may say, they being the criminals, oh, they just won't want you to be happy or they're jealous or let this be our surprise, all right? Again, the criminal knows if you consult somebody else that they don't have under their spell, they probably lost a victim the cons over. There are several episodes on the perfect scan about romance scams. Uh, they treat it very, very well. And if somebody won't listen to you, this is the number one question we get in this area. I can't get them to listen to me for the life of me. You can always have them call the AG's office, but you can also have them listen or suggest they listen to this, uh, to a perfect scam um, episode or episodes on the romance scam. There are several. And then another thing is think about loving local. 
and don't dismiss this. We all need each other. And um, this is a sign of, you know, being open to that. And so maybe some local uh, events you can suggest to people, um, be it a free concert, be it, you know, bingo, a flea market, whatever it is. Don't uh, don't uh, overlook that. And I've mentioned, um, you know, we say consult somebody you trust. What if you don't have that somebody? You can always contact the Attorney General's Complaint Specialist, 877, the number's here, 765-8388. Um, let's do a quick review before we go on to some other things. What is an important step to remaining powerful? Hint, you're doing it right now. Exactly, educate yourself. By doing this, uh, next, by doing this, by educating yourself, you will fight this fraud. You can avoid being manipulated um, and becoming emotional uh, and vulnerable. And remember that the fake caller ID, um, this from email text, they can all be faked. And if all else fails, right, spot the scam payment methods, right? Spot the scam payment methods. Now, um, and again, we talked about those. That's the cash, wire, transfer, et cetera. Here are a couple of fraud fighting extras. Two-factor authentication and freezing your credit report. There are details um, on these in, your, in the electronic handout. Um, now, two-factor authentication is a security system that requires two separate distinct forms of identification in order to access an online account. Basically, it forces anyone trying to access your accounts to provide more than just a username or password, right? So for instance, the account is gonna require a secondary code or verification process. Often they're gonna provide it on a separate device. Most often that is sent um, to you by email or text. Um, although this gives you another hoop to jump through when you're accessing your accounts, it's generally an insurmountable hurdle for the criminal. That is, unless you help them. If you ever, and I mean ever, get a request to provide somebody a code you received by text, email, etc., don't do it. Okay, unless you're completely comfortable with them having total access to your account, including the ability to lock you out of the account and take all your money if that account has anything in it. Okay, so at the very least, you should have two factor authentication on your financial accounts. Here's a recent scam. In fact, AARP says this is one of the hottest scams for this year. And it's an example of a criminal acting as if they are you and then locking you out. Here's how it works. A criminal gets uh, a hold of your phone number next. How do they do this? They get a hold of it. Maybe you posted uh, something for uh, your dog is lost. Um, next, please. Um, they they post, yeah, thank you. They post something and they get your phone number, all right? The criminal is going to call you, pretend to be interested, but say they want to verify you're not the scammer, right? And um, so they're going to need a verification code that you're going to get, right? And they ask you for this. They they explain you're about to get it, and when you get it, you need to give it to them, right? And so what they do, if you provide the code, they set up a Google Voice account in your name, lock you out and they start scamming others. And it looks like you're the one scamming others, all right? So use two-factor authentic authentication, know it, use it, don't give anybody a code you receive, right? All right, let's talk about freezing your credit report. A freeze suspends anyone from accessing your credit report, which means neither you, right? or identity thieves can open new lines of credit or loans in your name. Think of it as you're gonna lock away a valuable item for safekeeping until you need it. When you need credit, you can unfreeze your credit report and once again, allow lenders access. Freezing and unfreezing it, often we call it thaw thawing your account, does not affect your credit 
right? The pros are it's free. It used to be $10 per pop, three different credit reporting agencies. When it costs money, I didn't recommend you do it because I'm so frugal, the buffaloes jump off the nickels I have, right? But now that it's free, I really do recommend people uh, do this. Um, it is a great weapon against identity theft, right? That's another pro. It's a simple process. It also stops credit bureaus from selling your data. They sell your data more than you know, all right? So those are the pros. Anybody knows me knows I'm also going to tell you the cons, right? So you need to freeze with three separate credit bureaus. And one of those credit bureaus is going to require a pin every time you want a creditor access your credit report. So you're in Home Depot buying something. You don't have a Home Depot credit card. And I'm just using Home Depot as an example. I'm not endorsing them or knocking them or anything. And they say, look, you can save $50. All you need to do is get another credit card. Um, I might be tempted because $50 does sound like a lot of money. But if I have a credit freeze, I have to first unfreeze it. And it's going to take uh, some time. So that, you know, in the interest of full disclosure. Um, now, another con is it's not 100% guarantee against credit fraud or identity theft. But a lot of people my age don't need credit, don't want another credit, and they freeze their credit report, and then I don't worry about it. You know, if I need to unfreeze it, I can, but nobody else can access my credit report, and I feel pretty good about that. If you do become a victim of credit report, Attorney General Nessel offers customized resources and guidance to minimize damage caused by identity thieves. This is uh, the consumer protection phone number. They also have the identity theft uh, support team here. Now, I've been moving really fast because I wanna take questions, but let's do a fight fraud review before we get to the questions, right? You're gonna remain powerful by educating yourself, right? If nothing else, the Perfect Scam podcast. Another way is you're gonna refuse to be manipulated in becoming emotional or vulnerable, right? And we're gonna remember caller ID, all these things can be fake, so I can't trust anybody who contacts me as telling the truth. Maybe even have the people you're with repeat to them that to themselves. I can't trust anybody who's contacting me is telling me the truth. Now that sounds really overly pessimistic. I'm a very optimistic person. Look at the colors I'm wearing. Today's Thursday. No, it's really Friday Eve, right? So, um, but this is really something we need to help people understand that you can't trust anybody who's contacting you is who they say they are. You need to verify. All right. So um, our uh, review continued those scam payment methods. We want to make sure we remember those uh, what they are. Two factor authentication. Know what it is. Use it at least on your financial accounts. Consider freezing your credit report. Right. And remember that Attorney General, the Attorney General Nessel's team is here for you. Now your handout has some of these resources. Uh, li links to our consumer alerts, how you could file a complaint with us, our Elder Abuse Task Force, IC3, Internet Crime Complaint Center. That's a great place to report the FTC, uh, etc. So this is what the handout looks like. The scam prevention resources. Um, it's an electronic handout, so you can go here and use these electronic links, the complaint form, et cetera. Um, here's how you can fact check images with Google and how you can do the reverse image search. This is, by the way, really good even when you're running an Airbnb and you want to make sure. Now, Airbnb does a pretty good job of, of making sure um, that their hosts are putting accurate pictures out there, but you can do a reverse image search on a picture that you have and make sure it's only associated on the internet with the place that you're planning and going. Now, the handout also has the credit freezes and, and why this is helpful is these um, three major credit bureaus, they don't really want you to freeze um, your credit with them because they make money off of selling your information. And so they don't make it super easy to find and, and know how to do. But with this electronic handout, you can go to these links 
and access this uh, information. Now the handout also has some additional things that we didn't have time to cover today, how you can silence unknown callers, how you can refresh your Facebook security, you want to make it private, don't post anything that you use as a security question. Right, try to keep your birthday off there. I know that's hard, but you know, your first car, any any answer you've given as a security question, don't make sure it's not on any um, social media profile. Now, if you liked what you saw here today and you want to inv invite Attorney General Nessel's team to your area to give a similar presentation, this is not on your handout, and I will pause here. You can email ag events at michigan.gov. You can also just do mi.gov, that works. ag-events at michigan.gov. See if we can come uh, to your area and do a presentation. The Attorney General is so interested in what we're doing with the elder abuse and the scam prevention that she's even volunteered to perhaps do these in uh, some areas as her uh, schedule allows. So, ag-events at michigan.gov if you want to invite us to your community. All right, I went fast and I stole those five minutes from your break because I wanted to have an opportunity for uh, questions. So what do we have for questions? I think one of the questions we have is whether victims of a money mule scam can be prosecuted for their role in the illegal activity. That's a very good question and the simple answer and, and just so everybody knows what a money mule scam is, is somebody is being used as a money mule. They're being used to move money and they may or may not realize they're being used in that way. All right. So in, in through the Elder Abuse Task Force, we've been talking with uh, postal authorities and they've told us, yes, sometimes we see older individuals who get caught up in this money mule scam. And what we do is we let them know what's happening and that they are actually part of the scam now. And if they continue to do that, we will prosecute them, but generally we want to make sure these people understand that they are now part of the scam. All right, because at first they may just be a, a victim. So if you know anybody who is doing that or participating in that, um, yes, they can be uh, prosecuted. Two, if you're a family member, one thing that you might want to consider doing to see if your family member is still uh, participating in money mule scams is to sign up for UP uh, for the, uh, the um, postal and I'm looking for the slide to tell you to go to um, Kristen. Um, postal has a UPS uh, delivery and it's going to be oh, I thought I'd have this. You can go on their website. Huh. I have it right away. So, uh, yeah, keep going, Kristen. You'll find it. Um, it's 6466. So, uh, one, I don't I can't do the conversion that quickly. Um, so, UPS has where you can go online. There we go. And see what your parents may, or you, I've signed up for this recently recently so I could tell you about it what you may be getting in the mail on the perfect scam and this is how I learned recently that it could be used there was a, a son whose father got caught up in this it was both lottery and money mule and so he signed up so he could see what his father was getting to help coach him out of it. So that's something that you can think uh, about too. UPS has this, it's easy to do. Um, you should get uh, your parents uh, permission uh, to do this and you can do it on your own. I'd recommend you do it for yourself so you can see how it works before you think about doing it for anybody else. So that's an excellent question. I, I, I'm i gonna, gonna jump to another question. Uh, what happens if an individual has frozen their credit they pass away without unfreezing. Does this create significant difficulties for their estate? No, in fact, it 
I, I can answer this very definitively because my mother's uh, credit was frozen uh, before she passed away. May she rest in peace. What it does is nobody can open credit cards in their name. So once they pass away, um, nobody ought be using their own credit card, right? Now they may use, I have a credit card with my uh, husband. Yep, the same guy I sent to the store to get things, right? So um, I have a freeze uh, on mine, but if I pass away, he can still continue to use his card, but nobody can get new credit in my name. So it, it's not gonna create significant difficulties for their estate. So good, good question there. Any other questions? Don't believe we have any other questions about scams at this point. So, and we actually are finishing up just a couple of minutes early if there's any concluding remarks that you would like to make, Catherine, before we come to the conclusion of the event. Uh, no, just really thanking everybody that participated. I think this is a great, uh, a great, um, oh wait, I do want to mention one thing because I've heard about this recently and it's avoiding SIM swap fraud. I'll do it real quickly. Go to 171, Kristen. So if for some reason you stop receiving calls on your phone, you need to find out right away why that's happening. Right. So there's this SIM uh, swap where criminals convince your phone company to route phone uh, calls to them instead of you. And that could be a real problem if you're using two factor authentication. So next password, protect your phone. Turn on your phone located tracking in case you lose it. Uh, I'm sorry, pin, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. So yeah, pin for wireless account. You can get these, you should have that. If you stop receiving calls, get with your uh, phone company right away. Keep personal details off social media, right? We talked about that. And don't keep passwords or uh, personally identifiable information in an email box, right? Many of us have uh, on our phone, our email, right? And if this SIM swap, uh, SIM swap fraud works, then they've all of a sudden got access to your emails and everything. So password, protect your phone, turn on a phone location tracking, and, and make sure if you stop receiving calls, get to the bottom of it right away. So many things I wanna share, not enough time. I'll stop talking. Back over to you, my friend, Kristen. All right, thank you all of you for attending. And I think some of the most important information we can take from this presentation is that you need to be vigilant. And basically, if you've ever heard the phrase, if it's too good to be true, then it's probably not true. That's a good thing to keep in mind. So all of this information, just as a reminder, will be available on the Elder Abuse Task Force website within the next week or two. So you can watch these presentations again, either as a whole, or you can watch them one at a time if there's particular presentations you'd like to revisit. And with that, that concludes our event for today. Thank you all for your interest in preventing financial exploitation and for protecting seniors. Have a great day, everyone.